We have here some good pork. Pork shoulder and pork belly. Now, we could braise this in star anise and cinnamon and soy sauce, roast it in the oven for some crispy, crispy skin, or even stew with some kimchi and garlic. But what do Koreans do? We put the pork in a pot and boil it. That's it. I'm not kidding. This is called suyuk, and I'd argue one of the best Korean ways to eat pork. I am doing one thing differently, though. Instead of just boiling raw pork, I am browning my pork in my heavy bottom Dutch oven. Don't worry about adding any oil. These cuts are so fatty that they'll be rendering out their own fat in no time. So why brown the pork? Well, first we're introducing that Maillard effect, which gives us that roasted umami and aroma. Second, browning the pork can reduce any unwanted porky odors, especially around the outside of the meat. And finally, by rendering out the fat, we can make the final product much less greasy, especially the broth. And really spend about a good 15 minutes browning all the sides. Don't worry about overcooking the pork, these chunks are so big, they'll still be raw in the middle. Take out the pork, scoop out the lard, and now we can think about the braising liquor. And nowadays, some Koreans will put in all sorts of things. Some put in ginger, soybean paste, or even instant espresso powder, all to reduce that porky aroma. But I don't know about you, but I don't want my pork broth to taste of ginger and coffee and soybean paste at the same time. And since we browned the pork, we can just add hot boiling water and bring it to a boil. And when it comes to a boil, you'll see gunk and foam floating at the top, which we will need to skim off, since they have off flavors. But besides that, put the lid on and put it in a 300 degrees Fahrenheit oven, about an hour per pound. You can also just cook it on the stovetop, but make sure the flame is kept as low as you can. And the broth should barely bubble. As the meat cooks, we'll make some accoutrement. And that's the other thing. By not adding any other flavors to the meat, we can pair the meat with other toppings and sauces when we eat. And truly, suyuk is the cheese platter of cooked meats. And one common topping to the suyuk is posam kimchi. Take one large daikon radish and slice into thick matchsticks. Imagine those thick steakhouse fries. And for one pound of radish, add in one tablespoon of salt and five tablespoons of corn syrup. Mix well and put in the fridge for a good two hours to pickle. The salt and sugar will dry out the water through osmosis and make the radish almost squeaky. And to really drive the point home, after the radish is pickled, squeeze with your hands until they don't ooze out water. And now to season. I'm adding in one tablespoon of fish sauce, two tablespoons of sugar, four tablespoons of Korean chili powder, one tablespoon of minced garlic, and finally, one tablespoon of sesame oil. Add more salt and sugar to taste. By the way, this should be a little too spicy and too sweet to eat by itself. And now the other sides, especially to season the broth. Some spring onions, sliced thin, one spicy serrano pepper, sliced into thin rounds. Now we can't have pork without garlic. Take a handful and slice two. Oh, you can also get any raw herbs or vegetables to your liking. Lettuce, onion, arugula, anything. Now we have to talk about the dipping sauces. First is the seasoned bean paste, or samjang. This you're probably familiar with, but Koreans truly love their pork with this. Fermented Korean shrimp paste, or seoja. It's salty, it's funky, and it's packed with umami. Can't get this stuff? You can just skip it. Unfortunately, fish sauce is not a good sub. After an hour or so, check on the meat. The meat shouldn't be falling apart, but should be tender to touch, and when you poke it, the juice should run clear. If you cook this any longer, the meat will actually get tough. Take out the meat and leave it on a platter to rest for about 15 minutes. And when you slice through, don't be alarmed if there's a little color. If that's not raw pork, it's just the myoglobin. The USDA said so. And to make sure the pork is tender, see where the meat fiber flows and cut against it. I like the meat thick, but most probably like it a little thinner. Oh, suyuk is usually served slightly lukewarm, but if you want it piping hot, just take your slices and dunk them in that boiling broth for a couple of seconds. Now let's eat. Like I said, the pork here is a white canvas. A porky, fatty, delicious canvas. You can pair it with some sauce, some kimchi, some herbs, and all with a bottle of soju. And that leftover broth? 
of course you'll have to dump in some spring onions, some chili, some shrimp paste, and a heap of rice. And have another bottle of soju. 